Okay, so for this piece, what you're dealing with is an image that needs the design portion of it. So it's not really an environment. And I can't give you environment tips. Um, one second, let me just chug some water. Okay, so um, the point, uh, what I mean by saying it's not an environment and I can't treat it as an environment is because I can't balance the values. In an environment drawing, what happens is that we have to balance the values so that they adhere to the sunlight and the shadows and the values and the back background being faded, foreground being darker, atmospheric fade, atmospheric distortion, um, atmospheric desaturation, um, all of that, you know, which time of day it is. I can't apply that here. So the only thing I can really apply, because what you've given me to work with, is color. I have to fix the color. I have to tell you how to fix the color. And I also have to show you how to make this character's tones and contrast match with a black background. Now, you know and everyone knows that a black background is very difficult to paint over because a, bla a black doesn't allow a lot of variation for colors. Um, and, and what that means is that it doesn't allow a diverse grayscale range. It is too dark, and in order for the grayscale to really make an impact against the black, it has to be high contrast, meaning the whites, the grays have to have a lot of whites in them. So, oh, Simon, I hope you got my figure drawings too. Oh, I didn't, I didn't. Please send them here. Oh, I think I did, and then I closed it. <clears throat> Please send them so that I could see them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just I'm going to make this character seem like they are in a black, black back against a black background, and it's sort of like editorial or photo, uh, like photograph. Um, so I'm going to try to make it seem like this character is emerging out of the darkness. And after that, I'm going to fix the values of the reds that you have. So the first issue is you've got complementaries against each other. So you've got the red and the green. These are complementaries on the color wheel. These are opposites. And you've got it in patterns as well. So it's a very bold, bold choice of color. There is also extremely high contrast um, that you're going to have to take care of. <clears throat> so you see how black and how dark everything is compared to the skin, which is really, really high contrast. So what we will have to do is, if you have to keep the dark background dark, you're going to have to lighten up the dress and desaturate it. And so what will happen if we desaturate is things will match a little bit better with the background. Before the saturation was a bit too high and the colors felt a little artificial because colors can't be that bright in that dark environment. So we have to desaturate them to match the light environment because light reveals color. And if there isn't a lot of light and the room is black, there isn't a lot of diffuse light then again, there won't be much chance for the color to really be vibrant. So remember, where there is lack of color, there is lack of light. Where there is an excess of light, there is an excess of color, respectively. All right, so this is before and after saturation-wise. Well, let me get Simon's figures. <clears throat> so are you with me, whoever painted this? I need some OKs. Okays are my security blanket for me to continue. <clears throat> okay. Um, oh, I posted a link before. I'm kind of embarrassed to post it now, though. Please post it 50, so I'll be happy to take a look at it. Okay. So now that I desaturated, I'm going to fix the grayscales a little bit. So what I'm going to do is start introducing a light source color. This light source color can be a diffuse yellow, it can be a, a reddish pink light source, meaning it all has to be in the whites, but it can have a it can have a, a hue to it or a certain value to it. So it can be a yellow white, it can be a pink white, it can be a blue white. Um, I actually I'm not sure since everything is cool, I'm just going to go with a warm light source so that we can have a balance, or else everything will be too cool. So I'm just going to go for a yellow light. 
And what that will do is start unifying the palette together. So what Light Source, is, what Light Source does is if you use it on everything that you've painted in the image, so you use it on the dress, you use it on the skin, you use it on the hair, you use it on everything, what it will do is it will unify the palette together. So I'm just going to brush that over everything here. I'm going to use the soft light color mode. And what that will do is it'll warm up and it'll raise the value of everything. I'm going to use it on the skin, use it on the dress, on the arms, and of course on the face and all the light signifiers of a face, so the light spot signifiers. So those are the cheekbones, the milk mustache, the nose, and what this is doing is it's warming up the palette. It's also heightening the value just a little bit, but we will respond to that new contrast by fixing up the shadows a little. I'm also going to use it on the dress and all the areas of the dress that are showing. And I'm going to flatten that down. I'm also going to create a gradient, not a gradient, more of a halo, an inner halo, an inner glow of dark around everything. Because this character is emerging out of a dark background, so what will happen is that she will, the darks around her, see what that did instantly to the dress? The dress became instantly three-dimensional. Take a look at this. Before, after. Do you see what happened? Before you had a flat color going on, and what that did was that it didn't allow the shape to really take form. What light does is it reveals a shape to us. Light reveals shapes. Because if light, because light isn't 100% bright, and it isn't going to illuminate everything to a white, light isn't that bright. It's only somewhat bright. So there are going to be shadows. So we have to know where to cast these shadows, and we have to cast them in order for the object to seem like they're emerging out of the background. Before after. I'm also going to use it around the arm and anywhere where there, th where there is a background of course around the object. Just like this on the breast, on the hair, and a little bit on the side. I'm also going to place some around over here and on the skin. Also, anywhere where the light isn't touching, so the bottoms of the arms are not facing the light source, only the tops of the um, upper arm or, or lower arm are facing the light. So it means these areas aren't going to catch some light. There also needs to be a consistent cast, casting of shadows. So you cast a shadow under this breast, why not cast a shadow under this breast? just like this. And I'll fix the anatomy in a second. The next thing I'm going to do is desaturate this green because this green is way too saturated. Green is definitely possible to use in a painting like this. It is absolutely possible. However, you have to make sure that the right amount of green is visible because if you are using too much green then it's going to be really difficult on the eyes to accept the presence of this green in this painting. So what I'm going to do is use some red on a color mode layer to bring this green down. It'll still look green, but it will be a green that is a little bit less painful to look at. And again, only where the light touches, the, 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 the green will be as greenest. Because again, there is more color visible with the presence of light. So wherever the light touches, that's where we will have the green. And everywhere else, we'll have very little green. So areas around where the black bleeds into the dress will have less green, and areas where the light touches will have more green. All right, so let's take a before and after just at this stage. This is all just staging. This is all just making sure your character fits into the background, having nothing with composition yet, nothing with anatomy yet. So before... It was way too bright, way too graphic. It was like very, very um, vector type design, but you were still trying to do 2D illustration in it, and it's just, it's not working because the saturation is too high. You're not respecting environmental rules. If you had a backdrop that was black, everything would be very desaturated, and everything has to fit in, and this is after. She's looking a little bit more vampiric, a little bit more mystical, 
and she seems like she is part of the image. And if you look at the thumbnail, the thumbnail is very successful, meaning the thumbnail is readable. One thing I will do, wherever the color, wherever the light touches her dress, I will bring in a pink, a cool pink, red, for anywhere that the light is touching to represent areas of brightness. And then finally, I'm going to use the dodge tool to point to the highest point on her dress so it looks as 3D as possible. So now it looks like I'm painting a sphere. It's got its shadow section and it's got its light. I'm also going to frame the bottom of the image with some black to close off the image just a little bit so it seems like she is still emerging from her surroundings. Now I'm going to touch on the composition a little bit. Um, she is a bit off center and what you need to do is bring her back towards the center because she's the only image, she's the only thing in this image. She's the only point of interest. The background and those little those little flowers you've got going don't really do anything for the for the composition. They do fill in the background, but that's pretty much it. So I brought her back towards the image a little bit. And then what I'm going to do with her is I'm going to tilt her. She will still be leaning, but this time she's going to be a little bit more towards the center. Just so that it doesn't seem like one side is emptier than the other side. I'm just going to fill this in just like that. Okay. Recenter just a little. <clears throat> All right. Find the image now for some anatomy. Anatomy. Um, for the face, please guys send me larger, larger, um, larger quality because this is way too small. For the face, you've oversized the eyes. Um, it's not always that necessary to oversize the eyes. Also, you've, you've sort of lifted the nose up just a little bit so that it seems a bit like, um, excuse the term, but a pig nose. And what that does is that it doesn't really work, doesn't read well from a distance. The nostrils aren't that visible, they're visible only as tiny slivers. It's really recommended that you look up a reference to help guide you around the shape of the eyes and how eyebrows work. Because you're drawing a bit of a symbolic eye instead of a realistic functioning eye. Always be aware of that. The eyes are a bit too big. Again, don't forget when you're symbolic memory of an object comes back to you or tries to take over. I gave her a bit of a cheekbone to make her look a little bit more feminine. Nice job though. Amazing job on blending the purple in with her cheek. That's just spot on right there. Don't stop doing that. Good work. So I still have some fixing up to do with the chin and the corner of the lips. Okay. And don't, if you want to make character, a character look stern, don't overdo it. The character will look stern if you just have, you know, minimal expression happening. You don't have to make her actually look angry and give her angry brows like an actual emoticon. Don't draw emoticons in your image, images, guys. Um, okay, so let's start fixing up the shading. Um, so what we just fixed was, was proportion, and that's part of anatomy. What I'm going to do now is sort of bring in some core shadows. Remember, everything is a three-dimensional shape. So the head is 3D, so it has its own core shadows, and half of that core shadow, uh, half of the face is going to be in a core shadow. I'm also going to darken up the face one big shade, and one, the body as well one large shade and then I'm going to bring in lights only where I need them. I'm not going to just throw them everywhere. There is also a slight shadow that happens in between eyebrows. Just like this and don't forget the lip corners. I have many many videos on how to paint lips and how to make lips look realistic. I'm sorry I'm not looking at the chat if any of you are talking to me. If you have anything really, really important and you're on my Skype, just message me there. I'll probably get it, but 
Just hold tight. I'll try to get to your questions. You also, after you place in the shadow of the lower of the lower half of the face, a light is needed for the for the chin because it's part of the light spots. Indicators, major indicators of light. Because you've used green so much, I recommend changing the eye color. You know me, I love blue eyes, so I'm just going to change it to that. You can change it to anything you want. What that will do is bring in a new color. Um, and that's really important. Bring in a new color because that green is just taking over everything. And it's too too much of a, of a movement away from the red that you should use it for everything. You shouldn't. Right now, all I'm doing is the basic, basic rules I've taught you guys about be drawing a beautiful face. Real basics. <clears throat> okay. And I'm just going to cast the shadow a little longer. And now I'm going to darken the, the body one more time. And I'll show you the before and after in a second. Because the body isn't that light everywhere. It has light spots only in specific areas. So if the light is shining from this direction, then these are the major points that get the light on them. Sorry I'm a bit zoomed up. The quality is pretty low. Sort of the breasts are kind of pushed up because of the corset. So they will be they will be a little bit it will be a little bit of a high cleavage. And then one of the breasts will be in shadow. Just like this. <clears throat> Forgive me, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Just trying to make the breasts look a little bit realistic. So just imagine them as spheres sitting beside each other. I'll make it very easy to shade them and work around their structure. They can be a bit tricky. Very tricky, actually. They always give me a hard time. <laughs> that sounds like a start of a bad joke. Okay, I'm going to bring some of that red that I used for the upper part of the arm where the light touches. So it seems like there's a shadow, a consistent shadow being cast across the body. Okay, now for the hair and the head shape. The head size is a bit off. What I'm going to do is just... Um, shrink it and increase the density and just lower the head size. Excuse me, I'm probably going to sneeze in like two seconds. No, please, no. I'm going to flatten the head a little. <clears throat> and yeah, you, you want to give her a widow's peak, but don't overstate it. Again, there's not much that you need to make a statement. Subtlety is key. People just say that subtlety is key. I mean, what does... Just, just be subtle. Okay. And so now I'm going to add in some of that shadow on the, on the forehead. And I'm just following where the light source is coming from. And that'll sort of help guide me to where to put the highlights across the face. Okay, so it's a bit rough still, but what it is, it's a big jump away from what you had before, which was too saturated and very, very flat. And the way to avoid all of that is to think about the form, the cube, the 3D structure, how the object sits in the background, all the physics, really, is what you have to remember. Let's put in some dark spots for the nose. If I can, the saturation, I mean, the, the resolution is so low. Make the nose a little bit more sort of formed. Just 
darkening that up and bringing this lever highlight for the arm. Some highlights here. Just gonna zoom out. I'm just using my dodge tool to bring in some highlights because it is um, sort of fabric. Also, you've got a bit of a strange little inconsistency in the lines on her corset. You might want to even those out. Okay. So now she seems like she's a bit part of her environment and a bit part of the same room. So I can't apply all the rules of environment on her to make her match with the room. What I have to do is um, just apply the fact that there is a black behind her and I have to bleed that black into the image. Her corset is a bit asymmetrical around the breast, so I'm just going to make it more symmetrical. I slimmed out her arms just a little. I recommend looking up a reference for some of the stuff you're applying here. So look up a reference of a rose dress. Look up a reference of, of some other stuff and maybe that'll help you sort of form the dress a little bit better. I'm just going to throw some hair to represent the texture of the hair. Hair doesn't just sit like as a solid object. It kind of falls. A little bit of light on the collarbone, and then the neck needs to fade into the distance as well. So I'm going to bring in some of that red and fade the neck away. Give the neck a little bit of form. Okay, so I'm going to place, place in some highlights, high points of the body, so the cheekbones, the nose tip the on switch on the forehead, the brow bone, and all of that. <clears throat> Oopsie. My tablet hiccup there for a sec. Just darkening her arms. Good job on casting the shadow of the arm, but you might need to express it a little bit more. Alright, so let's look at the before and after. The arm is still bothering me, I'm sorry. I just need to even it out. Is so everyone else praying that Mayweather gets beaten like to a pulp? <laughs> That's sure as heck my prayer these days. <clears throat> <laughs> Go Pac-Man, yes sir. Alright, so I might want to, I can't really add in secondary light source. So secondary light source would be placing lights at the edges where there are shadows because there isn't anything indicating that there is any light source coming off to the side. So what we would have to do is fake it. We would have to just bring it in anyway, even though there is no light source out here bouncing back. So that would be done just by finding all the light, sh all, the, all the shadow areas, so um, all the core shadows, and just throwing a light source across. This this light here from the dress will bounce off on the dark side of her glove, of her sleeve, and it will lighten that up though, because there is a bounce light over here, but there isn't anything in the background that might give her a bounce light. I recommend looking up a good reference for hair. The hair you're drawing is a bit stiff. You're kind of framing the face with it instead of letting it fall organically. So that's something I recommend you bring in. And then finally a little bit of light just around the edges. I'm going to just use my lasso tool for here. The last tool is love and life. By the way, what was that whole imager thing, Shrek is love, Shrek is life? What was that about? 
So that's a little bit of secondary light source on the side. Of course, don't let it carry all the way to the base of the canvas because you still want to frame it. So just erase away the parts that are there and then reinforce the core shadow. Oh, it's a, vi it's a video where Shrek rapes you. <laughs> Really? <laughs> you guys are trying to protect me from them? I don't know. I quote it, but I don't know where it's from. So I just quote it like a, you know, like a turd. I don't, I just, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I just say, Shrek is love, Shrek is life. Hopefully I can be a part of the popular kids. Okay, I'm just casting some shadows here. Just like that, treating it as one large object. So this object here will be casting a shadow down like this. Everything casts a shadow. Everything is a cube. Everything, everything, everything. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. Everything casts a shadow. All right, so the before and after is upon us. Let me just do one last little... Oops. One last little thing, just bringing in her chin. If you shrink a face and lower the chin or heighten the chin, it will make the face look cuter. If you want to make a face look more mature, just stretch the length of the nose and stretch the chin down. Okay, so before, after. Before your colors were a bit saturated and they were a bit... Um, overstated. They were a bit elementary. They were like crayons or markers. They're too, too, too um, strong, too saturated, too primary. Uh, does air cast a shadow? Um, sort of. It can't really be called a shadow. It's too thin to cast an actual located shadow, but it can be very thick and humid that light has a difficult or slower time traveling through it. So clouds are really dense air, I mean really dense uh, water. So what they do is they cast a shadow of their own because they have a level of density. So you just have to imagine what's the level of density in air and it will cast a shadow respective to that. But it's so minimal, there's also almost zero density. Um, well there is a density but it's like practically, it's not enough to cast an actual observable shadow measurable um, in any quantity. Uh, so it does cast a shadow, but it's a very tricky little way of thinking about it. But um, but these are the colors. One second, actually, please. Hello, Shahab, and welcome. So yes, this is the before, and this is the after. What I did was I balanced the, the, the colors back. If you do want to saturate, and listen to this, guys, please listen. If this is too much of a desaturation for your specific taste, if you are an artist who wants to draw with oversaturated colors, you have to saturate, again, only where the light touches because it does not saturate in dark areas. Very, very rarely does it do that. So you can go ahead and bring this kind of red if you wanted to. Not really. But like this kind of red. As long as it's in the area the light is touching. All right? So you can saturate here. You can saturate here. You can saturate on her chest. You can saturate her hair, but only where the light touches it. You can't saturate everywhere you want to. Also depends on the kind of material that it is. Do you see how the object gets brighter as you saturate? Because light brings in more saturation. So now her dress looks more three-dimensional, actually looks like a flower or some sort of wrap. I recommend you change the color of the thing completely though. Like green, like I'm only working with it because it was your choice, but I recommend like changing it to like a, like a gold. Because it really will help the palette move on. It, 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 it's just, it's too much of a, it's just too, too much of a, of a jump across the, the color wheel. I mean, you can get other colors off the color wheel, even, even this blue matches better than, than this green. It's just, it's just too much. There are beautiful colors, but you're the designer. And ask any sort of, any fashion designer, they just don't mix red, reds and greens together that often because it's just so, such opposite colors. 
like mixing blue and yellow in a, in a costume or in a, in a, in a um, material is, is just too much. You have to be wanting to sta make that kind of statement. So if it's like a, a weird little children's book dinosaur or something silly that you want to catch the eye. But if your image and your illustration and all of that is going to do all the eye catching, green isn't really necessary at that point. So I'm just going to keep the color you had oversaturating only where the light touches. Again, just like I did with the red, saturate only where the light is touching. Be careful, be careful, be careful of messing around with complementary colors. Be careful. Okay? Before, after. I hope this helped. <clears throat> Save, wait, cancel, flatten. Yes, use some analogous colors, exactly. Use some colors that are very that are beside each other on the color wheel. Okay, so this image here. Um, I think this is a woman, but because it's so the face is so masculine, I'm having a very, very hard time seeing it as a woman, especially because of that haircut. I think it is a woman. Is it a man or, or a woman? I'm very confused. There is no penis. There is a slight suggestion of boobies. I'm going to go with woman, guys. There's also that slender little hood. Cool, cool outfit, though. But very, very masculine features, like to a point. So let me t show you how to make this feminine. We round off the forehead. Almost instantly female. Keep the cheekbones sticking out, but make them a little bit more high and circular. Don't do this little lip, the little lip fat. Don't do that. Sign of age in a drawing. Yes, it happens in real life. Yes, these are things that can be in real life. Women can have these little things. But we as artists want to create the beautiful thing. Because that's just how we are. We're very vain. We want to create beautiful people. So I basically, all I did was sort of shrink off the bottom and anything that seems like it is overdeveloped, any skeleton that seems a bit edgy, I'm, I'm softening it up. The jawline over here, I'm going to let it connect up into this a little bit easier. I'm also going to increase the size of the eyes. Just um, a little, and then decrease the size of the nose. I'm going to try to make the pupils look in the same direction. So she seems a bit more focused. I'm going to raise the brow bone, because that's another signifier of female face. Not so much that she has an expression, but enough that it seems like that's its natural arch. I'm also going to pull the eyes apart um, because that's what that's what we ha well, that's what we see with cute faces is eyes that are pretty far apart. If you look at a cute face or the triangle of cuteness rule, what happens is that for beautiful faces, eyes tend to be a little bit distant from each other. Also, female eyes have a tilt, so they tilt inward, lower, eye, lower corner is lower than outer corners. I'm just trying to continue the symmetry, keep it consistent. And because this is lines on shading, you're having a bit of a difficult time sort of shading away from that masculine face. I'm not sure which reference you used or why you used it, but it's extremely, extremely masculine. So now she looks a little bit more feminine. Before, very masculine. After, very feminine. Okay. 
masculine, feminine. So let me give you a tiny little lesson. I did this last time as well. The ogre is the thing that I always draw. Large chin, very small head, small eyes, big, big mouth. All right, so this is an inverted triangle, meaning big mouth, small nose, smaller eyes. For something cute, it's the opposite. Large eyes, small nose, small mouth. All right, then you'll get the cute. And that would be something like, very cat-like. Oops, I drew a cat. Very cat-like. So that's the girl. This is sort of like the girl, and this is the ogre. These are the examples, my examples of male and female, sort of like my, my um, yes, metaphors. If you were drawing anything that has any relation or any similarity to the, up to the triangle, then then, then, then that's basically how you figure out whether or not your image looks, or your female looks masculine or your masculine looks feminine. Um, same thing with the inverted triangle. If your, if your male character looks too female, it's because they're too triangle-y. Okay? So I'm going to leave that there so you can take a look at it. Um, for the breasts, I think everything else is pretty much okay now. The arms seem a little bit large. It could be a little bit lower, a bit too high, so it would be up to here. And the, the wrists are not thin enough. You have to thin out the wrists. All right, and then finally, when you do shade this, and you want to maximize her beauty, please do not paint in the laugh lines. If you want her to look as beautiful as possible, beautiful faces do not have sort of that laugh line or an intense version of that laugh line. Also, don't oversize the cupid's bow and just have the basic shades in order. The nose, the lips, the cheekbones, the forehead, and the tip of the nose. I'm really not sure why you used a masculine reference. Um, I guess you have your reasons, but beware. I'm going to give the lips a little bit of form, so I'm going to give them some color, and I'm going to bring in the dark spot for the lips. That looks a little bit more feminine for me um, than masculine. This stick keeps cutting out. Do I, do I cut out a lot? Okay, so one more before and after. Before, do you see the masculine? Looks very, very much like an old man, especially with that haircut. And after, I sort of gave it a female face. Oh yeah, the breasts, I was going to fix those. Um, for the boobies, all you have to really do is just contort the form of everything that wraps around them, just so that they seem like they're, they are around an object that is emerging. So the wraps and the armor, everything sort of wraps around them, follows to their shape. And that's pretty much it. There's some symmetry issue over here.
Okay. So before, after. And I will send that to you. I hope this helped. Yes, please. All right. Oops, did I close more than I had to? Damn it all. <clears throat> okay, so this is Christie's from last time. The only thing, because I already gave you a critique, so it wouldn't be seem appropriate if I spent too much time on it, but um, depending on where the light source is coming from, so the light source seems to be coming from this direction, the, sh the shield will cast a shadow on the body, just like this. It's a bit dark, by the way. The whole drawing seems to be a bit dark. Um, after that, there is also there should also be some light on the leg, and then this leg casts a shadow on this leg, and then there would be some light only on this side of the leg. So light over here, and light over here. So this would be, damn it. This would be shadow, and this would be shadow. Because this is casting a shadow that walks along his leg. So this leg is casting a shadow like that. Only this part of the outer leg is really catching some light. Alright, and this foot over here seems to be a bit short. So I would just increase its size, its width. So the width has to be wide as well. And then make it so that we're looking at the grooves of the feet from above. So they wouldn't be pointing down like they do here. They'd be sort of contorted because we're looking straight at them. So they wouldn't be parallel like this. They would point up. So the foot was a bit short and not wide enough. So it was a bit thin and short. Um, let me just... I oversized it. Suck. Okay. Alright, so before the foot was very, very thin, very feminine, and then after. And that's sort of some really, really basic lighting things that you can apply. So before, after. I know this is a bit bright, but you'll do that rendering. And the shadow of the shield is necessary, because if the light is coming this way and the light of the shield is up here and the shadow is up here, then there would be some light coming from that side. Okay. Um, I sent it on Skype <clears throat> a long time ago. Oh. I'm not sure if I can get to it today, Jacob. Yes. All right. So next up is this image. Um, so you've got the eyes down. You've got the lips and uh, the nose down, but the lips have a bit of an issue. The chin, the whole shape of the of the face is very not childlike. So what you need to do is, if her mouth is open, we're not really looking up at her face from like a severe angle, so there should be no reason why everything is sort of coming off. And for children, eyes are very, very large. Because their heads are small, so their eyes look large. Remember that space in between the eyes as well. They have a lot of space in between their eyes. A smaller nose. And a small mouth. And even though she is like curious and is looking around, her face is still intact and we haven't really disrupted the, the actual anatomy that much.
So lately I've been looking through the YouTube comments and some people comment on the videos uh, saying things like, um, you know, well, what you did here, the critique you did here looks nothing like it, uh, like the original or the critique you've done here looks um, like a different person entirely and it's not really what they were going for. Remember, if you use photo studies and you don't give me the photo, I'm just going to critique according to what I see. And I don't have a codex of all the human faces on the earth available to me. Um, 24-7. I'd have to search it up and then spend three or two or three hours on your critique so I can make it look as realistic as possible with the reference that you used. So I don't do that. I don't have time for that. So all I have time for is just to give you a quick brush over, you know, some of the major lighting issues and anatomy issues that I see. I'm just making her eyes a little focused here so they look like they're looking in the distance. Um, back to that other topic. Um, Please know that I'm here for your benefit, and I'm not here to sort of cripple your styles or cripple anything. I'm here just to give you as much knowledge as I have um, and just make it an easier, easy transition for you into the world of art, an easy transition out of your out of your bad habits or out of the difficult things that you find in, in your art practice. To, to say, to leave comments like it looks nothing like you know, what you, what the person started, no, duh, I know that, I know that it looks nothing like that person, I know that it looks very, very different, and it's, and I say that, and I say that a lot, I say that I will be painting away with what you guys have, have, have drawn, um, so, you know, be aware that, um, that that's what I'm doing, and I'm not trying to ruin your styles, most of you don't have styles yet, most of you aren't even practiced enough to even deserve the, the title of style because everything you do is a habit at this point and not a style. <clears throat> so what you're trying to do here is make it a little bit haunched and I'm just trying to haunch her back in a way where she seems a bit uh, a little bit more sort of balanced and I'm going to make her hair seem like it's falling. So, so in these few weeks you did more with my digital painting than my professor I've worked with. Thank you very much Ado. It's the smash. <laughs> she knows we love her. <laughs> I read. Hi, Irish. I mean, I mean, hi, um, Carla. So that's basically what I'm trying to say to you guys. I'm not trying to cripple your development. I'm, tr I'm not trying to ch act like I know I'm a know-it-all. I've heard that a lot in my life, people thinking that I think I'm a know-it-all. I really don't think I'm a know-it-all. If you just ask anybody who knows me, um, I am my worst enemy. I'm my worst critic. It's it's really more of a, you know, me helping out and sort of giving my insight on something. I don't know a lot and it's not me pretending like I know. I wouldn't talk about something I don't know about. I would never open my mouth about a topic I have zero experience with. But if I do have experience with it, I will give you my insight if you ask for it. Um, and that's pretty much why I'm here today and why you guys are here is to sort of um, sort of give me the mic a little bit and, and see what I have to say about something. And I appreciate you guys being here for that. But for those who do feel like I'm just this evil person who thinks she knows everything and um, and I should shut up, uh, probably, you know, it's really easy to just turn off the pause or turn up, say, like press on the pause and just stop watching. So easy to do that. And so just do that if, if you get sick of me. Um, the face has a core shadow on it from the light source, so half the face will be in a shadow, just like I just showed you, and then we will have the light sources. Again, if you worked with a reference, and I don't have that reference, I will just work with the principles of light and shadow that I know about. So that's pretty much all that I'm applying here. I'm just illuminating the chin according to the core shadows I know are there in the face. I'm going to bring in the dark spot of the lip just a little bit because her face is a bit is a bit um, soft and I want to keep her face soft. If there is an expression, it's probably going to be in her eyebrows if she's excited or she's looking over at her boxer dad. Or I don't know, this is not string, this isn't a boxing. And I've got that match on the mind. <clears throat> she's probably just um, on like a fence or something. Okay. You also need to give the the dress a little bit more form as well. So where is the shadow? Where are the points of the dress that are disappearing into the distance? So we need to make sure 
that everything is dark where it needs to be and the light is only where it needs to be. Just like so. They just jealous? <laughs> we will find them. <laughs> I feel like people who can't listen to get offended about the kind of critique you give aren't really interested in improving their art all that much anyways. I feel like that too, not just because it's specific to me, it's not me in general. Anyone who isn't interested in any kind of critique whatsoever, constructive criticism, not some rude crap, um, like constructive criticism, if anyone isn't interested in that, they really have no desire to get better with their work. And I, I like to say that I'm the kind of person who gives a critique that isn't too harsh or isn't too nice. I like to find a balance that is both honest, but also I like to express my care for you as well and not be too cruel or not expect too much of a, of a student who just started out. And I'm not going to say, oh my god, you don't know about um, subsurface scattering? I can't believe you don't know about that. Like, I would never say that to you guys. Um, number one, I'm not an asshole. At least I try not to be in public anyway. <laughs> and number two, I, I, there's no learning to be gained if I talk like that to you guys. So it's all, it's all constructive, at least from my effort, at least from what I know about what I'm doing. So um, if you do guys, if you do have a problem, of course I accept critiques as well. Please critique my work. Just do so in a way that's constructive. Don't just go and say you act like you know everything. Because I will delete your comment. I have no time for those kinds of comments. Um, if, if I feel like you, you placed no effort in, in your comment and just, just came there to insult me, you know, everyone would do that. Everyone would remove that comment. There's no reason to have that hovering around around my videos. In these videos, I never posted them to be some sort of YouTube presence. I don't care about being a YouTuber. I'm not a YouTuber. I just posted them there because live stream likes to delete my videos. <laughs> so I had to post them somewhere where they will not be deleted, and that was Facebook. I mean, YouTube. Okay, so I'm just going to finish up with this critique. Just giving the cheeks that adorable baby baby fullness. So baby face means there's very little, when someone has a baby face, they have very little cheekbone. They have more cheek than cheekbone. So more fat. Um, and that's pretty much all that it is. It's not nothing, nothing else. Okay, so I'll show you where it was before. Sorry, let me look at your comments. So the, so the expression you had before was a little overstated. Her back seemed a bit haunched, her head seemed a bit large, but that's okay, because it was a child's body. Um, uh, the lip was was drawn in a way that she seems like she was doing an actual expression with her, with her body instead of just doing a, a curious expression or something that was a little cute. Um, you also drew the nose and the mouth as if we were looking up at them. Her body, unless she was haunching her back all the way, like unless we were a worm looking up at her body, her, her face would be like that. But otherwise, her face would just pretty much go back down um, that way. Um, that subsurface guy is pretty complex, though. <laughs> Dragon. Uh, I don't know what's that. You should push people beyond what's expected of them. I think that's the absolute necessity. Yes, I believe so too, Terry. Um, Mayweather Daddy. <laughs> um, I made an Apollo from Rocky Jog. You're hiding the hands, right? Okay, I'm just going to let you guys chat. <laughs> if I read everything you say, <laughs> we'll be here all night. Also, there are some high points on the face, on the cheekbone, on the nose, and uh, a little bit on the chin. All right, just like that. A little bit of light on the brows, because brow bones do get illuminated, which means the brows also get illuminated. Okay, and I'm just trying to find some symmetry. Um, you know this as well. Um, Johansson Hansen, <laughs> uh, you know about uh, the fact that the, the skin around the eyes is very reflective and very stretched and very moist. So what it does is it has a bit of, a, of, a, of, a, of an illumination in that area, because that's how you drew it, which is very good. So I'm just trying to reinforce that again, because it kind of painted it away. I will admit, I do paint away your stuff, and then I say, hey, you should have drawn that in, and then what the person says is, well, I already painted it, and you just painted over it, and now you think that's my mistake. So I do do that, I admit. <laughs> okay. So.
so save. Actually, I think I just saved it as a PSD. So before, after. Kind of gave it less of an expression for the lips. And then finally this. If this is a 14-day challenge, I will not do consistent critiques for you. This is why I do not take on 14-day challenges. I'm just going to give it a quick look. Um, the eyes seem to be a bit small. The nose is a bit wide. If you are working from a reference, please stick to your reference. Don't deviate away from it and bring in your own info because it will look very odd combining the info you have in your mind with the reference. You have to do that later after you've learned the principles of light and shadow that happen on a face. Lips are very well drawn, eyes are very well drawn, it's just scaling and sizing. You had trouble with scaling and sizes, choosing which size is all the features, are all the features. Um, so the eyes need to be a little bit larger. If you want to leave the eyes the same size, that's okay. Make them a little bit less, um, make them more spaced apart, pull them apart a little bit. Shrink the nose just a tiny bit. Increase the size of the nose bridge, the width of the nose bridge, increase that. And um, you can also increase the size, decrease the size of the lips as well. Um, so thanks everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye.